Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is talk to you about what are the six trigonometric functions and basically what exactly do they mean. And you know, this actually uh, means a lot. This video means a lot to me because I remember when I first learned these and I just, you know, you just do what you're doing. You don't really make any sense of what you're doing or why you're doing it. And even though I still taught it and I understood, you know, a lot of things, Again, I'm still looking for like a better explanation. And finally, I was reading some documents and I came up with something that actually made a lot of sense. And basically our six trigonometric, um, big six trigonometric functions can be related to ratios, which is basically a comparison, right? So we think about comparisons, you know, like, um, you know, compare your ages, right? Compare your age to my age. Compare how much you weigh compared to how much I weigh. Like we're always comparing things, right? And a lot of times even when we talk about, you know, also a, you know, ratio, we look at like a part or a whole or so forth. Well, the six trigonometric functions came in when we were, when back in the day, the mathematicians were looking at triangles and especially right triangles. And that's what this is going to be focused solely on because the six trigonometric functions are only true for our right triangles. But what they noticed when they looked at the right triangle is that there was always a side. It didn't matter how the triangle was drawn. But whenever they had a right triangle with a right angle, that means that angle with the little box was equal to 90 degrees, there was always a side that was the longest. right? And, and that side was always directly across from our 90 degree angle. And what they called that 90 degree angle or I'm sorry, that side was the hypotenuse. And I'm just going to abbreviate it, which is HYP. So in looking into their ratios, one thing they noticed, ah, da, 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 da. Let's actually go back to these. One thing they noticed when they were comparing the sides of the triangle, they noticed that the ratio, the comparison of the hypotenuse from the side lengths was changing. Okay, It wasn't always the same. So there, however long the ratio of the triangle, the hypotenuse was, um, the ratio changed with the different side lengths. And that is basically what our six trigonometric functions are. It's a ratio. It's a comparison. Um, you know, how does the side lengths compare to the hypotenuse? Now, we know that they cannot be the, exactly the same. So how close are they to its ratio? Are, you know, is this side length half of that side length? Is it one third of that side length? So all your six trigonometric functions are is just a ratio, a comparison from one side length to the hypotenuse. Now, it's important though when we're looking at our six trigonometric functions to identify an angle. And you know, I'm using a very typical triangle that we're going to see. Um, and you know, you'll usually see triangles that look like this. But identifying what the parts are of the triangle, all or the comparison, all depends on what is our angle. And a lot of times we're going to use the uh, the symbol theta. So that's going to represent my um, angle. Now I do have to just kind of show this other triangle. Let's just do exact replica, because things are going to change if I make my angle theta up here. Now. We always have our hypotenuse is always directly across from the right angle. Our adjacent side is always going to be between our right angle and our theta. So in this triangle, here is our adjacent. In this triangle, here is our adjacent. And then the opposite side is going to be always the angle or the side length that is opposite of our theta. And again, I am just abbreviating all these for you. And that's going to be our opposite. OK? So the comparison of this angle theta, we have a couple comparisons. We have opposite to, to the, we, so we can compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse, the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, as well as the opposite side to the adjacent. But then, not only, we could also do, well, what about how does the hypotenuse compare to the opposite, the hypotenuse compared to the adjacent, and the adjacent compared to the opposite? So therefore, you come up with our six trigonometric functions. So I'm going to erase this because we're just going to focus on one. OK. So the first trigonometric function, or the first ratio that we're going to use is going to be the sine. So it's always, the sine is a function. It's always the sine of an angle. Again, that angle puts our triangle into context. You know, what side, what does everything, how does, there, how does the side lengths relate to that angle? Because if I'm talking about theta, or if I'm talking about alpha, it means totally two different things. For instance, just real quick, sine of theta. Actually, you know what? Crap. 
Let's do that again. Let's call this alpha right over here. OK, so real quick, if I'm talking about sine of theta, what I'm talking about, what the sine is, is the relationship of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Okay, But that can change, because what if I said I want to know the sine of uh, alpha? Well, that's totally different, because now the, uh, the um, opposite side is down here. right? And if I was going to put numbers in the context, that could be something totally different. If I said this was you know, 3, 4, 5, well, the opposite over hypotenuse is 4 over 5. But sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse still. So it's still the same ratio. But now, in the context of the angle I chose, this is the opposite side, and that's, and that's the adjacent. So if I still had the same side lengths, then now my new ratio would be 3 over 5. So again, that angle is very, very important. And it's also very important to identify what is your opposite and what are your adjacent sides. OK, hopefully I'm not going to use Well, I'll just leave it up there. But we're not going to do, we're not doing problems in context of numbers. I just want to throw that in there to kind of help your understanding a little bit more. So the sine function. A sine of an angle, it's always the sine of an angle, is basically the relationship or the comparison of our opposite side over our hypotenuse side. Whereas the cosine function is basically just the relationship or comparison of our adjacent side over our hypotenuse side. And then the last main trigonometric function is the tangent of theta, which is the relationship or the comparison of the opposite side over the adjacent. And again, remember, if I'm talking about a different angle, the opposite hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, opposite adjacent still remain the same. But which, where those sides are, what the values are, can change. OK, so those are your three basic trigonometric functions. But now we also have the reciprocal functions, which basically means that the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Well, then what would we call the relationship or the comparison of the hypotenuse to the opposite, which is the reciprocal? So that's why we call these reciprocal functions. So the first one is we have cosecant of theta, which is the hypotenuse over the opposite. We have secant of theta, which is the reciprocal of cosine, which is the hypotenuse over adjacent. And we have the cotangent of theta, which is the adjacent over the opposite. OK? Um, one quick thing to kind of remember, a lot of people, you know, I'll just write this up here. A lot of people, I remember, this is how I learned it. Um, learn it by Sokotoa, right? So that's sine, cosine, tangent. And just remember, sine, opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, Tangent, opposite over adjacent. Just a quick way to easy to remember these. But it's also very important to understand the um, reciprocal functions. And remember, it's all in context of our angle. Because even though these are the same, you know, again, if I change, if I start doing this with theta, even though it's opposite over adjacent, this is now my opposite side, and that's now my adjacent. So it all changes based on the context of the angle that you're using. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just a brief introduction of your six trigonometric functions. Thanks.